Welcome to TWT, Tales with Thomas. I thought it would be a good idea to share some milestones of my life, which some people think it's interesting and some people suggested, um, in particular Dan suggested it, to share some of my stories with the people and with my audience because it could help people on their journey towards spiritual growth and awakening. So here I am today, Dan is sitting in the background and he is asking me the questions. Hello Thomas. Hi Dan. So let's begin at the very beginning. Um, where were you born? I was born in a small village, less than 2,000 people in the southwest of Germany near the French border. I was born in a family of four boys. Okay, I see. And are you the eldest? Oh God, no. I'm the youngest. <laughs> Obviously. So basically, my eldest brother is 10 years older than me, and then the next one, nine years. And then the next two, they are twins, eight years older. So wow. I was the cosmic accident. The what, sir? A cosmic accident. A cosmic accident. What's yep. a cosmic accident? <laughs> I think I wasn't planned, at least the way that my parents may have envisioned number five to be wasn't a boy. My father sure. desperately was wanting a baby girl, but I turned out to be another another boy. See. So that's why I keep saying I'm a cosmic accident. And of course, my mum would never agree. She would be very I'm upset. Sure. And well, maybe they her. weren't planning for five. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So you fell out of a UFO, basically, is what you're saying. Roughly. I mean, to be quite honest, I really felt out of place from the very beginning of my life. Mm. But the reason why I started off with this journey is because I remember at some stage my granny, I loved my grandmother, mm -hmm. she told me, I have no idea what age it was, but it must have been maybe five, six, maybe four years old. She said to me, you know, your father, when he came out of hospital after you were born, he came back home, he walked straight past the house into the nearest pub and he was drinking down his disappointment. Oh, Basically, my granny said in Germany, we have this expression, um, he was sweeping the pavement with his chin, mm. chin, like mm -hmm. chin, chin. Mm -hmm. And this means he was really very disappointed that it was just another boy. Oh and she said it without evil intentions, mm. but it took me a very long time until I realized how much that actually impacted the way I thought about myself, mm. my relationship with my father. Um, it was always about how can I please him? I have to make sure that he is happy. Um, yeah, so it has really had a very, very strong impact sure. on me personally. <clears throat> so when did you first realize that it did have such a strong influence on you? It was much, much later. It was, I don't know, maybe the early 20s or something. It was when mm. I started my spiritual journey and when I left my um secure position at the post office at the time. We will talk about that at a later stage. You were working at the post office. Yeah, so we will talk about that another time. So that's when I realized how much I was basically entangled in the expectations in particular of my father. Mm. And when you realized that, or when you saw that, how did your life change? It is, it was a gradual process and what we are doing here is we are dealing with ancestral and paternal patterns that we carry. Mm. So it's not something that you can just sort of on the of tip of your finger say, okay, it's gone tomorrow. Sure. It's been a process of a very, very long time. To say the least, the last fractal of that memory 
left me in one of my visits to Peru in 2019. Why did you go to Peru? Um, went to Peru because of my whole shamanic journey. So ah, nice. maybe at a later stage we will go into that. So what I'm saying here is it took a very, very long time until I felt I've completely let it go. My first realization, it gave me a sense of freedom, a sense of understanding my father, dealing with my frustration about myself of not being good enough, mm -hmm. because that was a big one, and needing to please, needing to do whatever I was expected sure. of me to do. So once I realized that, it slowly, that pattern started to chip off. <clears throat> I see. And um, if people are watching this today, what would you say to them if they've experienced something similar in their lives? What I would say is we are a complex being. Mm. The way we perceive the world at this particular moment in time is shaped by all the experiences that we have had going back childhood, going back even during the pregnancy, but going back even to past life situations. So number one is making an attempt to try to become aware of what could be patterns that you carry mm. with regards to who you are as essentially <clears throat> as a mm -hmm. human being, because I believe we are we are beings without limitations. Everything is possible. Consciousness as such is the same consciousness that resides in you. It's the same consciousness mm. that resides in me. And it's the same consciousness that makes a flower flourish and the tree grow. Mm. So it is about uh, becoming aware what are those limitations that keep us in the conditioning mm. becoming aware of that and doing everything possible to release it so that brings me on to an important question what would you say to someone who you know has just come back from staying with their parents who completely annoy the hell out of them They've come home, they're really upset, their parents are just pushing all their buttons. How can they find their center again? How can they get through that process of, of, of um, healing? Number one, acknowledge those feelings. Don't push them away. Sure. I always say when it rains outside, you can't pretend the sun shines. Mm. Even though behind the clouds, the sun is still there. But we have to deal with the rain, which means we have to deal with those emotions and with those feelings. So don't try to push them away mm -hmm. and try to ask yourself, dig deeper. Why am I reacting like that? Is mm -hmm. it because I'm not allowed to live my vision about myself? I'm, um, I'm just trying to be someone who I am not. Mm -hmm. So try to, to dig deeper, try to understand okay. where does it come from. And then it's also important to become aware of where does it hit you in your body physically? Is it your solar plexus? Is it your heart? Maybe your neck or your shoulders or wherever it is, try to locate the sensation. So when you are in an argument with your parents, for example, or in a disagreement, try to find out how does it affect me? Where does it affect me? And what is it that is really underlying these reactions that you have? Is it because you're being pushed to do something that you don't like to do? Is it because you feel that your freedom is trampled upon, so you can't be freely expressing yourself? Is it because maybe, and this was very much the case in my case, you want to be loved, 
So because you want to be loved, you suppress the feeling, you be all smiley in the, on the outside, but internally you're cooking and boiling and, and basically you're struggling. So dig deeper, feel the physical sensation, ask yourself, sit in silence and ask yourself, why am I feeling like that? What does it do to me? And then of course, dealing with the situation in a mature way, there are various things that you can do at some stage, really go and talk to your parents and say, look, if you speak to me like that, this is how I hear it. This is what I am experiencing. This is what it does to me. And it's a difficult scenario. I mean, parents is like, like, like you always say, if you want to test your state of enlightenment, just mm. spend another couple of weeks <laughs> with your parents. The fast track to enlightenment, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. So it is not as easy as I make it sound here, but sometimes baby steps can be sure. really uh, important steps. And number one would be become aware of you reacting the way you react. Mm. Um, and you said a little, a little earlier that you first noticed how much your father's disappointment had affected your life just after you left your job and you started meditating. So how does med meditation play a role in all of this? Very good question. Meditation is there as a catalyst to clear the reminiscence of those moments in our life that have left a scar. It's mm. basically there to soften, to smoothen out the scar tissue on an emotional level. And because emotions are trapped in our physical body, of course, it will have a response to how we hold ourselves, our posture, how we move, mm. like all our aches and pains in a way are very much linked to psycho-emotional um, incidences. So what would you say to any viewers who have never meditated before or don't know how to meditate what advice would you give them start to become aware become aware of your breath would be number one and meditation doesn't mean you need to sit still and quiet and um, be forced in a particular position and you can't move there are so many nuances to meditation and many things can help you to deepen an existing meditation practice mm. well this leads me to the fact that I'm currently running a six week um, Awakening Alchemy meditation course. Awakening Alchemy. Which is basically for people to get and gather tools how they can deepen their existing meditation mm -hmm. practice, but also for people who have no idea what meditation is and who might find it difficult. So that might be an option for people to explore. And why did you choose the, the name Awakening Alchemy for the meditation course? Alchemy means transformation. Mm. So you are transforming from one state into the other state. So awakening comes in, becoming aware of what needs to be transformed in mm. the first place. Once you know the what, you can figure out the how. And awakening alchemy gives you the understanding of the what needs mm -hmm. to be transformed and the tools of how to transform them. Sure, great. So if somebody wants to do that course, how can they find out more about it? Easy, just check the links in the video below. Okay, that's great. So is there anything else you would like to say to viewers who um, might be experiencing a similar situation to that that you went through when you were a young boy or a young man? Be gentle with yourself, be patient with yourself. And some things, sometimes they can't be forced. There's so many other factors that play a role. There could be still some strong karmic links to um, friction that you may experience within your family and is becoming again aware of those frictions and then slowly 
unbinding yourself. There are various techniques you can do, but to answer your question very directly, be gentle with yourself mm -hmm. and stay true to yourself. As much as possible, we are being asked in those situations, which is the biggest challenge, to stay without too much of emotions. Try to pull yourself back emotionally, which is not easy when you're in the middle of it, mm -hmm. but do it when you maybe come home and you are in your own space and you reflect oh. on it again. But what you mean, you don't mean to push those emotions away, right? You mean you feel them, yeah. but you step back from them. That's what I mean. Right. So observe them, become mm -hmm. aware of them. So um, number one, observe how you feel and use your breath to change it. Um, as as one of the ways to to actually deal with it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. I look forward to the next um, of Tales with Thomas. Well, let's see where we go with this. So basically, the plan is that we go through different stages of my life. I wanted to start at the very beginning because this is what actually shapes our life. Mm. The first seven years. Whatever happens in the first seven years really influences very much of how we perceive our world, how we communicate with our exterior world um, later on in life. Mm -hmm. And very often, and this is another thing that um, I noticed much later, I hardly remembered anything of my childhood. Mm -hmm. Although I had a wonderful, in essence, really nice upbringing with my brothers and there wasn't any big violence or any abuse or anything like that but certain events I had blocked out and that event with my granny telling me it only occurred to me much much later mm. so yeah there we go tales with Thomas TWT is um, we are planning to do this every week so maybe join us for part two next week Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you.